In this video, I will provide you with a few ideas for actually framing the loft. And we'll start with a simple one here that I've already drawn. And this one here will require a ledger with some joists that would attach to hangers. And it's not uncommon for an engineer to require lag bolts. So let's say it, you might need a four inch lag bolt. That would give you an inch and a half plus two inches into the framing stud. And uh, I would imagine that they would be at least uh, five sixteenths, um, possibly uh, three eighths bolts. But again, this is just speculation. I'm not an engineer. And um, another method for attaching a ledger would be using 16D nails. Um, three or four might be required for each stud. And uh, another view of it there. And this drawing here has a single joist on the end. The next one uh, will have a larger joist. Now you can actually use a double joist here or a beam. Here's the beam that I'm talking about. It's not uncommon to have something like this at the edge of a floor and uh, this would give you some more strength also if you were going to use it for a to connect a stairway to. So this one will have a post underneath it, a 4x4, if you're going to use a 4 a 4x12 beam, something like that. Uh, you might need a 6x12. You might need a bigger post in here. And don't forget that you might actually need a footing underneath this, um, and you'll see more of that in the next section. Um, something like this, I don't know if it would require a footing or not. It would depend upon the width of your existing footing kind of a thing. But you can just see here where the beam is sandwiched in between two framing studs. And the ledger just simply butts up against there. And then you could just toenail this into the beam and then, of course, uh, nail right into the framing stud also. Get a nice connection. Now, I wanted to show you some mid-span blocks. A lot of times they're required for widths over 10 foot wide. You got to have uh, mid-span blocks and they really do a great job at keeping the joists uh, or preventing them from twisting and stuff like that. But I do have to say this is something that a lot of people miss is uh, they squeak sometimes. This is where your squeaks come from in your floor sometimes. So uh, I'll leave it up to you whether you want to install them. If you do, stagger the blocks so that you can nail them. You can face nail it. You can see here where you could face nail it on this side and then face nail it on the other side and then work your way down all the way. So that would be it for this one here. Um, you know, I don't know, you know, I can't give you any recommendations for strengthening the footings. For something like this, um, that would be something that, like I said, you'd need to check with an engineer on. Um, but uh, if your footings are strong enough, something like this would definitely work. Next up will be to have a beam that will support the joists. These uh, walls and footings, of course, won't be. You will have two, the wall here and then the beam and this will be transferring the load of the floor here to each post and then down to the footings, which uh, you would probably need to install a footing for this type of design here. Take a look at the footing. And again, the size I wouldn't be able to provide you with, but you would need one on each side. Kind of just giving you an idea here what it would look like. You can't do this uh, when you're working out on the job. Uh, joist hangers again will attach to the joist will sit in joist hangers and attach to the ledger which a ledger will of course be either nailed or you would use lags to attach it to the wall framing kind of going around there are the hangers again attaching the joist to the beam 
view from the bottom. The other angle there. Let's go ahead and take off over to another suggestion that I have. Um, let's just say that uh, you're thinking you're going to need a 6x12 or a 6x14 for something like this. Well, you might be able to use a 4x12 for something like this or a 4x14. If you put a post in the center, this would kind of cut the load in half, um, the structural load from the floor. So just kind of wanted to throw in another idea out there. And again, if you're going to build a wall across here, you could also use the wall to help support. The wall would just come off of the end of the post. Um, and uh, you could basically put the post inside of the wall, if that makes sense. Just kind of giving you another view here. Something else you're going to need are fire blocks. This will prevent any fire from that if there was a fire underneath this floor, it the fire or the flames will not come into this area, or I should say at least it has like a one hour burn through. And something else about fire blocks is it also prevents oxygen from fueling the fire. If this was the only source of oxygen and uh, it's you don't have this block here and it's pulling oxygen from above, uh, then uh, these fire blocks are going to be helping you there too for, to prevent that from happening. Now, one more thing, uh, if you do this design, I already talked about this footing here, but you also might need to create an additional footing underneath the, or the existing footing. And again, I'm just kind of throwing something out there that I've done in the past when, I've, uh, when an engineer might have actually required something like this. So anyway that is it for this video hope it helps if you are going to build a loft then feel free to use some of these ideas just remember like i said uh, you've heard this before from me i am not a structural engineer i cannot provide